Hey guys, welcome to the Sonic Drive Studio channel. Today we're going to take a look at some metal guitars which I tracked with my Fractal Audio XFX. I used an amp model based on a 50 watt EVH 5153 head and I think it sounds pretty good. However, sometimes for various reasons there can be a need to reamp the guitars. In case of the XFX, I can reamp the guitars back via USB, but this can be a little time consuming so we're going to use a VST platform now. Since I was really going for that EVH 5153 sound, we're going to need to choose a platform that also models this amp. In this instance, we're going to use Thermionic, which is an amazing amp modeler platform by Kazrog. It's a plugin that comes pretty close to the Axe Effects tonally, and it only costs a fraction of the price you'd pay for a fractal. So this will be quite interesting. More about this plugin in a bit. First, let's listen to the pre-recorded fractal guitars in the mix and solo. And now just the guitars. So that's a great sound actually, but we're just going to reamp these guitars for demonstration purposes. And also to see how Thermionic compares to the Axe FX. Before we go on, I'll show you what I'm doing processing wise to these XFX guitars. I'm running them through the Slate Digital Virtual Tape Machines for some gentle saturation and coloring and also through the Virtual Mix Rack also from Slate and I'm going through the Virtual Console Collection set to the Brit 4K E mode and I'm running it through the SSL simulation here and I'm only using this to cut out some lows under about 100 Hz. Okay, so now I'm going to mute the XFX group and I'm just going to solo uh, one of the DDI tracks and we're going to open up Thermionic here. As you can see, the Kazrock folder has many plugins in it. This is mostly because of the fact that uh, Thermionic has split up all the amps into separate plugins. So in this case, we're going to need to use the Psycho C amp model, which is based on an actual EVH 5153 amp very similar if not exactly the same as the one Fractal modeled. And there's always going to be a difference between the two platforms uh, simply because they use different actual amps to model. And real amps tend to have tonal variations between them, so uh, keep that in mind. Before we tweak this module here, we're also going to load up ReCabinet, which is the impulse loader by Kazrog. Tweaking amp tones without an IR isn't fun because it sounds like crap. So um, we're going to choose an IR first. I'm going to mute cabinet two and I'm going to scroll to the heavy hitters collection volume two by Ownhammer, which is the pack that I also used for the XFX preset. And I used the EVH, well, the Edward Van Halen cab here. And I used the Ownhammer one file in that particular folder, in the quick start folder because it sounds really nice. We're probably going to change this IR later on, but I'll leave it on here for now so we can tweak the amp a little bit. So back to the amp model here. As you can see, this layout is pretty basic, but it certainly does the job in the sound department, which is way more important if you ask me. The main screen here shows the front controls, which has uh, some basic amp settings such as gain, equalizer settings, presence, depth, an option for normal and a bright switch, and we have an output volume as well as a saturation control. This basically emulates a master volume. So if you want to simulate turning your amp off very loud, you can turn this up. This will introduce some power amp compression and distortion. And over here in the options menu, you can turn on or bypass the presence and depth controls. I'm going to turn on the depth control here because I like to have a little bit more control over the low end. You can also turn on or off the preamp and power amp sections, and you can force this plug into mono. I'm going to use the highest quality setting here. And of course, wet dry will be set to 100%. Let's go back to the front controls and set this to the red lead channel, which is the channel with the most gain. And let's take a listen. <laughs> Sounds pretty nice right out of the box. 
I've just turned down the output level a little bit to compensate. So uh, what I'm going to do now is just tweak the amp a little bit to get closer to the tone that I'm going for. Let's go ahead and do that. <laughs> So I'm pretty happy with these settings so far. Now before we go into the IRs, uh, let's load up a reverb here to give this uh, tone a little bit more room. I like to use the Fractal Audio Reverb for this. And I usually set this to Recording Studio C with the mix set to about 10%. Let's take a listen to what happened to this guitar tone with the reverb. It's just giving it some nice space and a roomy sound. Okay, then uh, let's go back to Recabinet for the IRs. Before we tweak the actual plugin, let's go uh, to the IR selection box here and go over a couple of similar speakers from different cabinets and see which one we prefer. So uh, as I told you before, this was the EVH cabinet with the EVH speaker option. But in the Ownhammer collection, there are a couple of other cabs too, which also have the EVH speaker. So it may be cool to uh, also check those out. One of those cabs is the Bogner standard cabinets, the 4x12 here. As you can see, it also has the EVH speaker. Let's go for the same mix, the own number one mix in the quick start folder, and see how that sounds. <laughs> I love that sound. It's really aggressive and kind of scooped. Um, I'm just going to scroll through some of these files so you can hear the difference between the different mixes and single mic files. Here we go. <laughs> For this particular tone and for this particular cabinet, I prefer the modern uh, option here. But you can also find an EVH speaker option in the Heavy Hitters Collection Volume 1. Let's go over to that pack right now and go to the Marshall cabinet with the EVH speaker option here. And again, the Quick Start folder for easy access to well-balanced files. I hardly ever use anything other than files from the Quick Start folder. Let's start off on the Ownhammer 1 mix again and see how that sounds. And then I'll also go through some of the other files to see how they sound and to see how they compare. <laughs> I also think that this cab sounds really great. It has a more balanced sound than the previous Bogner files. And for this particular cabinet, I prefer the Ownhammer 1 option because it has a little bit more low end. And now, finally, let's go back to the Heavy Hitters Collection Volume 2, which I started off with. And of course, this pack has the EVH uh, cabinet itself. 
And uh, again, I'll scroll through some of the files to see which one sounds best for this particular tone. Here we go. <laughs> So as you may have noticed, the Onehammer 2 files here have a bit of a smoother top end and the Onehammer 1 files have a bit more of a bright sound and a nice bottom end. And the modern files here are a bit more balanced and those tend to have a little bit less of that boomy low end going on. <laughs> The chunk files here also sound great. They have a bit more mid-range. To my ears, for this tone, the modern mix sounds best, so I'm going to stick with that one. Then let's take a look at the controls here to see what we have going on. So as you can see, there's a high pass and a low pass control here. Let's use this to cut out the low end under about 100 hertz. <laughs> I think 99 hertz sounds fine in this case. Now let's also dial out some of the low mids, just a gentle amount. I love the fact that Recabinet has these options to tweak the IR sound even further. Now there's another very cool feature in the options menu here, which is the dynamics uh, switch. It's turned on right now, and what this does is it simulates the dynamics of actual speakers. When you turn your speakers up very loud, they tend to compress and distort a little bit. This does a great job of emulating those features. Let's see what happens if I uh, tweak this control. <laughs> I think 50% is the sweet spot. It sounds great. All right, so this is sounding great now. So what I'm going to do now is store these settings in Cubase and also load them onto the other track. So both DI tracks now have the same settings and uh, the first track is uh, panned all the way to the left and the other track is panned all the way to the right. Let's take a listen to these guitars soloed. <laughs> So that's already sounding pretty great. Now what I'd like to do is load up the virtual tape machines from Slate again, just as with the other tracks. And I'm also going to load up the virtual channel from the virtual console collection also by Slate and put it on the Brit 4KE channel. This is just for some gentle coloration and saturation. Let's take a listen to how it sounds now. <laughs> I still feel like I can enhance these guitars a bit further and make them fit better into the mix by using some EQ. So for that purpose I'm going to load up the Aosis Air EQ, which is a great equalizer. And I'm just going to use that to remove some low mids. <laughs> So 
So I'm starting off with a broad bell here to take care of some of those low mids. I'm also going to dip out some more narrow peaks just to take care of some of those resonant uh, frequencies. <laughs> I think that these EQ tweaks will make this sound a lot closer to the Axe FX. Now let's check this out inside of the mix. Yeah, just adding this EQ opens up the guitars a bit more and leaves more room for the drums and bass. Now let's compare these Thermionic guitars to the Axe FX guitars again. I'll just play those for you. And back to the Thermionic files. And also soloed. I think that after the tweaks, both platforms sound pretty close and they both sound very good. I would definitely be happy with either of these two options on a record. In comparison, to begin with, the Axe FX had more of a scooped sound and Thermionic had a bit more low mids going on. So if you're like me and you like to track guitars with hardware such as an Axe FX, a Line 6 Helix or even real amps, but you don't want to go through the time-consuming hassle of reamping guitars in real time, Using a VST such as Thermionic could make your life a lot easier. Plus, this method also allows you to tweak the sounds during the mixing process. This was the video. For more information about Thermionic, head over to casrockplugins.com to check out the various single amp models or bundles. They are very affordable, especially compared to something like an Axe FX. For more information about the Ownhammer guitar cab IRs, head over to ownhammer.com to see what they have to offer. And I'd love to know what you guys thought of the tones and how both platforms compare. So leave your comments and questions below. Also, if you haven't done so already, please hit subscribe and head over to facebook.com slash sonicdrivestudio for more content and to stay up to date. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you next time. Cheers.